Welcome to the 2021 Salute Ceremony in honor of our 2020 Alumni Award winners and fellowship inductees. This evening we'll recognize these honorees who have distinguished themselves as leaders within their respective industries. Good evening, everyone. I am Charles Davis, and it is my honor to welcome you to our virtual ceremony. Thank you for helping us celebrate the achievement, leadership, and commitment of these outstanding alumni and friends. I know I speak for all of us, the alumni, faculty, staff, and students, when I offer hearty congratulations. We're a better, stronger college because you are a part of us. So, congratulations to our honorees, their families, and guests, and a special thank you for representing us with such distinction. It's an especially thrilling time for us to recognize each of you. We stand on the verge of regaining all that we've lost in the past year, all that we once took for granted and now cherish. Time with you all, whether virtual or soon enough in person, just means more now. To all of you, thank you. Thank you for your perseverance, your flexibility, your words of kindness and support. We're going to emerge a stronger, more vibrant, more engaged college than ever before, and we'll begin tonight. In a time of change, challenge, and opportunity for journalism, communication, and all media, the college remains at the forefront. We're a trusted guide, a constant source of vision, innovation, and leadership, and a beacon for telling the stories of our time. In a few weeks, we'll send forth 500 more new grads to join 23,000 plus Grady alumni around the world. Alumnus and 2014 Young Alumni Award recipient Greg Bluestein, a political reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, will address our virtual convocation on May 13th. And ESPN's Maria Taylor, a 2009 alumna, will speak virtually at UGA's commencement that evening. Tonight, we salute and support what makes our college extraordinary, a dynamic combination of achievement, leadership, and commitment. To get us started, it is now my honor to welcome Lauren Izzo, Chair of the Grady Society Alumni Board and Vice President of Client Solutions and Sales at Nielsen to begin our Salute to Alumni Award honorees. Thank you, Charles. It is great to be here with you. On behalf of all our alumni, it is my honor to represent the Grady Society as we present the 2020 Alumni Awards. Honorees were selected by the board and presented to the Dean from nominations by alumni, faculty, staff, and friends. Thank you to my colleagues on the board for their wonderful work and thanks to all who nominated candidates for this great honor. Presenting our winners tonight are a very special group of the college's students, our ambassadors. They are the best of the best, and we are so pleased to have them with us to introduce each honoree. Minna? Thanks, Lauren. Good evening. My name is Minna abdul -Wahib. I'm a third year from Bogart, Georgia, and a double major in journalism and international affairs with an Arabic minor. One of my favorite things to do on campus is hanging out with friends in the Miller Learning Center, even if we're frantically studying for finals and chowing down Panda Express. After graduation, I'd like to attend law school and study international and human rights law. Our first honor goes to the John E. Drury Young Alumni Award winner. This honor bears the name of legendary Dean John Drury, who created a national audience for the college by putting it on the national stage. Our honoree is a 2014 graduate with a degree in journalism and is also a graduate of the Women's Leadership Program at Yale School of Management. Previously, she worked at US News and World Report and released her first book, How to Bury Your Brother, in 2020. Please join me in congratulating Drury Award winner, Lindsay Cook, Senior Digital Storytelling Editor for the New York Times. She's a hybrid. She's a precision, data-driven journalist on the one hand and a great storyteller on the other hand. That occurs rarely. First five years from US News and World Report to an editor's job uh, 
at the New York Times, and in between, oh, also went to Yale uh, School of Management uh, and graduated from an entrepreneurship program for uh, women. Uh, oh, also at the same time, uh, she goes to Qatar, one of the Gulf states, to Al Jazeera's uh, first global um, hackathon. And she and her team uh, get one of the 10 greatest idea awards. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, uh, she decides, I want to write a novel. And she does a two book deal. Uh, and the first kind of Southern Gothic uh, novel uh, just came out in May. So professionally, she's not only doing national media right from the get go, she's doing the other things that she wants to do at the same time. It's an honor to be recognized for the award, but it's really cool, I think, that Grady's recognizing someone who doesn't have a traditional career path. Um, even at Grady, I had kind of weird interests. A lot of professors didn't quite know what to do with me. I was the kind of the, the data nerd among a sea of either computer scientists or like magazine writers <laughs> with the coronavirus. Um, one of the things I help with is we get data from a lot of different cities and counties and states about their numbers. And what we try to do as journalists and data reporters is to standardize all those numbers and to look at them with a critical eye and say, what do we think is trustworthy and what do we think is not trustworthy? And then give um, the best view that we can to our readers. We're in a really crucial time for journalism right now, just with all the investigations that are happening, like the Russian investigation and what's happened with the election. Um, I think we're really going to see a resurgence and an interest in journalism among young people, um, just kind of like after the Watergate scandal. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Grady does with that and how they educate the next generation of reporters and editors. Good evening, my name is Julianne Bernstein, a fourth year double major in public relations, international affairs, and a certificate in global studies. Originally, I'm from North Potomac, Maryland. After graduation in just a few weeks, I will begin my master's in emerging media here at Grady College. The Mid-Career Alumni Award is presented to a graduate for their professional achievements, influence, and success in his or her field. With nearly 20 years at Johnson & Johnson, Branding Innovation has guided our recipient to multiple positions with the company. She credits her campaigns class in the accompanying campaign competitions during her senior year at UGA as a foundational example of the collaborative teamwork needed to accomplish the goals of an international brand. In addition to her 1995 advertising degree, she holds an MBA from the Terry College of Business. Will you please join me in congratulating Porvi Farahi, Vice President for the Global Self-Care Franchise at Johnson & Johnson. Kirby, I think, is so exceptional and is so worthy of this award because of everything that she has achieved in her career. I mean, she is a hard worker, um, but it is just how much she has accomplished at a global company at such a young age to launch, to do their largest over-the-counter launch, which was Zyrtec, to, you know, lead the launch of adult Tylenol to bring it back after 10 years of into being in decline, to lead their European marketing um, to this very data-driven strategy, digital strategy, despite all these new privacy laws that she was trying to navigate, to come back to America and be the chief of staff for the global chairman of consumer products is incredible. I, I think Kirby is so unique as an individual, as a person, because of her loving heart and just her kindness. I just love and adore her and I'm so proud of her. I just I just think she's amazing. You know, I've been able to, to work on um, a lot of our iconic equities like Tylenol, um, 
I've been able to run a lot of our global businesses. I actually, we actually moved and lived in London for a couple years. I've always had a sense of things that I wanted. You know, I, I wanted to work in brand management. I wanted to get global experience. I wanted to live outside the U.S. And, you know, the order and the sequence of those things weren't laid out, but I think being really clear on, hey, this is what I aspire to, and this is what I'd really love to do. And thinking through what are the, the right next steps to get you on that trajectory, um, you know, I think, I think really helped me. I'm incredibly grateful. You know, there's thousands of amazing alumni who've gone out to do amazing things in the world. Um, and to think that I'm recognized for what I've been able to do um, is really, really humbling. When I was in high school, going to Grady was a goal of mine because of the excellence that it stood for. So to receive a, an award um, from some place that I was really aspiring to get to um, just when I was in high school is something that I'm you know, proud and, and grateful for. Um, but I think it also just speaks to, you know, while cliche, you know, honestly, just sort of casting the, the net a little bit wide and being really ambitious um, with, with what you can do. Good evening. My name is Anna Catherine Alderman, and I'm a fourth year from Anniston, Alabama, majoring in journalism with a minor in sports management and a sports media certificate. One of my favorite moments at UGA was when I had the opportunity to go to G-Day for one of my sports media classes. It was the first time I had ever been in the press box at Sanford Stadium, and we were able to attend Coach Smart's post-game conference and interview some of the players. I've had several exciting opportunities through Grady and through the sports media program, but this was one of my first big opportunities my freshman year. This evening's final alumni award is named for the late great CNN reporter John Holloman Jr., one of the original Baghdad boys, whose courage, calm under fire, and tenacity in the service of truth still inspire. We honor John in presenting this award for lifetime achievement. Tonight's recipient is an award-winning journalist who's informed generations of Georgians in her 37 years at WSB-TV in Atlanta as part of her 45 years as a broadcast journalist. She earned her master's degree from Grady College in 2014 to pursue the credentials needed to teach journalism after her days on the nightly anchor desk. She's the first woman and first minority to anchor the daily evening news in Atlanta and has won 33 Southern Regional and Local Emmy Awards. Please join me in congratulating Monica Pearson, retired WSB TV anchor and reporter, as our John Holloman Jr. Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. I know Monica the way a lot of people in Atlanta do from watching her on the six o'clock news for so many years. I think excellence is, is the word that, that I keep coming back to. And also the uh, just inspiration that she has been to so many women and particularly so many women of color. And to see this incredible uh, journalist who was a black woman who looked like me, who came from a similar background as me, talking about her exciting work as a journalist, that opened up a new world to me. And like every other Georgian uh, growing up, I would turn to WSB to watch her on the news. She always reported everything that needed to be reported, but she did it with an understanding and a compassion. Like whatever the news was of the day, no matter how good the news or how devastating the news, we could hear it from her. That was her power. It's her, her ability and her use of that ability. And it's the strong journalistic foundation she has and builds upon. And this combines with her wonderful credibility, believability. We have someone like Monica, whose life as a journalist and whose life as a stellar you know, human show you know shows uh, a commitment to 
social justice, equity, fairness, um, and to the highest standards of journalism. And I think that's why she deserves the Lifetime Achievement Award. I was so impressed when she uh, announced after her retirement that she was going to start her next chapter by going to graduate school at a time when she certainly could have been uh, forgiven for wanting to take it easy. And I was so pleased that she uh, decided to go to uh, Grady. I chose Grady because of its reputation and because of the Media Studies program. I wanted to learn more about Media Studies, but I also wanted to learn about the new technology, where media was going next. I looked at the fact that the University of Georgia presents the George Foster Peabody Award. I am touched so often and humbled so often when people tell me I'm in news because of you. It means that my main purpose for being in that job was not only to report the news, to anchor the newscast, to give people information that helped them make decisions about their lives, but my role was also to let young people know, you can do this too. And I am just so honored, but more so humbled to receive this award named for a man who did so much in a short amount of time in journalism. And I'm proud because it comes from UGA and from Grady. The skills I learned at Grady opened up a whole new world to me. So receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award named for John Holloman is breathtaking. I want to pinch myself, but in the same vein, it's telling me you got to keep going, girl. We turn now to a special privilege of the evening, induction of the late Dyer Massey into the Sanford Circle. The Sanford Circle is named for Stedman Sanford, who founded the study of journalism at UGA. It was created to honor late champions of Grady whose dedication, achievement, and inspiration remain with us. A native of South Carolina, Dyer Massey began his career in journalism in high school and continued it at the Red and Black while he completed his bachelor's degree at UGA in just three years. As a master's degree student, he served on the faculty. He later served UGA as Director of Public Relations, Executive Secretary of the Alumni Association, and Assistant Professor of Journalism. After purchasing the Wrightsville, Georgia headlight in 1945, he served as editor and publisher until 1951 writing articles against the Ku Klux Klan in the area. He spent the latter years of his career in higher education, serving in development at Furman and Emory Universities. After his death, the Georgia chapter of the Public Relations Society of America established the Dyer Massey Radiant Star Award for continuing and outstanding contributions to the Georgia chapter. Join me as we salute to the memory of Dyer Massey. Our parents were both from Georgia, but were living in Greenville, South Carolina, when Dyer, the, the oldest of the six of us, wanted to go to the University of Georgia and go to the Gradage College of Journalism. He was editor of the Red and Black. He was a member of Phi Beta Kappa and Phi Kappa Phi, the highest scholastic honors. He was an associate on the faculty of the Grady College. He had an outstanding career. He was editor and publisher of the Wrightsville Headlight in Johnson County. And in the 1940s, when the Ku Klux Klan was riding high, he wrote editorials condemning the Klan and uh, uh, trying to t tell them to slow down some of their activities. And he even had a cross burned in his yard in, in, in Riceville, but it didn't take away any of his courage or determination. And he continued to do the, the things that he thought was right. 
do I believe that, that, that journalists had a serious social responsibility in the rightful headlight. He had a serious concern to make that a better area and a place to live and to encourage citizens to be involved in, in worthwhile activities. He not only talked the talk, he, he walked the walk. Anytime he was involved with an organization, uh, he, he gave his full talents and the full, the full time and ability and uh, quickly rose to the leadership in those groups and that encouraged and, and inspired of others. He, he set a great example. He was asked by UGA to, to stay on, on the faculty and for at least two years, incredibly, he held three positions. He was the director of public relations and was executive director of the Alumni Association and was an associate professor at, on, the, on the Grady College and apparently performed all of those tasks uh, very well. I'm so excited that he's been inducted into the Sanford Circle because I know how much he loved the Grady College of Journalism, the Grady College of Mass Communications, and how much he loved the University of Georgia and the state of Georgia. So I, I know he would be, be, be extremely, extremely pleased. He set a high bar and a high example and has been an inspiration to, to our family and many others through the years and, and always will be. The names and faces you just saw show that the Grady Fellowship is a singular group of alumni and friends whose lives, careers, and remarkable love for the college began the tradition of this evening in 2008. Good evening, I'm Jody Daneman, President and Executive Producer at Atlanta Image Arts. I'm also currently serving as the President of the College's Advisory Board, the Board of Trust. It is my honor to take part in this ceremony that inducts the 2020 class. The Grady Fellowship is one of the most meaningful groups that I have ever been a part of. Simply put, it is a special form of friendship that is cemented by our love, dedication, and advocacy for the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication. Membership is conferred for the sole sake of honor by the Board of Trust on behalf of the college. Fellows don't need another award or another board to serve on. They honor us just by being, and by being who they are for our students, for the college and the University of Georgia. The medal we bestow tonight commends them with our appreciation and deepens our legacy as a college. To introduce this year's class, I'd like to invite another one of our amazing Grady ambassadors to do the honors. Marquan? Thanks, Jody. I'm Marquan Norris, a fourth year from Fitzgerald, Georgia, majoring in public relations and communication studies. One of my favorite moments at UGA is all of the late night smelling dining hall runs with all of my friends. But tonight, it is my honor and privilege to welcome the 2020 class of inductees into the fellowship. Let's begin with our first inductee, Allison Osmond, Senior Vice President of In-Flight Service for Delta Airlines. Allison has spent her professional career at Delta Airlines, a company she joined in 1985 as a flight attendant. Working her way through positions of greater responsibility, Osmond currently leads a team of 24,000 flight attendants, supervisory, and support personnel around the globe, 
as well as Delta's onboard experience and their global food and beverage operation. Allison is, uh, is, she's simply fantastic. Uh, you know, anybody who knows her knows that. Uh, you know what you have in her is somebody who's deeply passionate, who's energetic, who's enthusiastic. The way she leads is bold, the way she thinks is bold, the, the fact that she supports and uh, is an advocate for great creativity uh, is rare in my experience among people who lead large operations. She does it brilliantly, she does it compassionately. Uh, and she's just, to, to me, a, just a great example of, a, of an output from the University of Georgia and a representative of Delta Airlines. She serves the tens of thousands of flight attendants she leads every single day. She serves the 200 million passengers that those flight attendants uh, interact with every day. She serves the varying constituencies within Delta, whether those are for charitable causes, uh, work-related purposes, the community more broadly. She's a leader in and around the world. Human trafficking uh, would not be uh, the cause it is at Delta were it not for Allison's leadership, nor would uh, the efforts that we do behind breast cancer research and, and the money that is raised uh, to fight that disease. She's an outspoken advocate for human issues, things that matter to people, that, that play a meaningful li uh, role in people's lives. Uh, and for that reason, Grady can be justifiably proud to, to have Allison in this great group. I would have never thought sitting over in the School of Journalism at Georgia that I would be sitting here today. There could have been no better degree or learning that I got from Grady um, to help me and support me as a leader in what I do today. Writing news copy, getting those words right, being succinct, telling those stories, how powerful storytelling is. It was all about communication and you know the more I've gone through my career, um, life is all about communicating and relationships. It's great to share this honor with so many incredible people. I know um, as I look to the list of, of fellows, there are business leaders there, there are you know, those in broadcast and radio uh, legends, uh, TV legends. It is an incredible honor, um, but one that I would just say thank you to the Grady School for really setting me up for the success that I have today. I honestly wouldn't have it without you. Every speech I have to do, every email I write, I think about those days sitting at Grady with my professors like Al Wise and others uh, really telling me and, and teaching me um, how to be a great communicator. So thank you so much. Chris Clark was one of the longest tenured anchors in American television history. He served for nearly 41 years at WTVF in Nashville. He was appointed to the Siegenthaler Chair of Excellence in First Amendment Studies at the University, leading to his current position as adjunct professor and serves on the Grady Board of Trust. Chris Clark was a main anchor at Channel 5 at Nashville for 41 years. And that's just incredible in a local market, but nationwide, that's almost unheard of. He was well respected by uh, uh, people in the Nashville industry, government leaders, as well as his co-workers who knew Chris would always do the right thing. Chris is a great supporter of the First Amendment. He was during his time uh, as a news director and as a working journalist. He uh, was the first to get the S Supreme Court in Tennessee to allow cameras in, in the courtroom. They were very resistant to that. And, and Chris proved to them that they could have cameras in the courtroom and not be uh, disruptive to the proceedings. He was a leader in moving Channel 5 from film into electronic news gathering. That was a huge move, and to see that evolve into what it is now, Chris was always in the forefront of leading that. He cares about journalism. He cares about the young journalists that are coming along. Chris uh, hired a 19-year-old 
young woman, uh, which was unheard of, without a college degree, uh, to work in the newsroom. She eventually became his co-anchor on the news desk. And little did he know, or anybody know, that young woman would become Oprah Winfrey. So what a vision that was. You go places you never thought you'd go and do things you never thought you'd do and have an effect on people you never thought you would have. This honor comes to me after I re have retired. I can think, well, Chris, you did a pretty fair job of everything that you were doing. But then to get the recognition from Grady School that Chris, you did more than a fair job. I mean, that's what it means to me. It means the school recognizes what I did and honors me for it. And that to me is really the capstone of my career. I can now tell my grandkids that Grady School thinks I did one hell of a good job while I was a practicing journalist. And that means a lot to me. Carol Ramos Helton and Dick Helton have each earned strong reputations in radio and television broadcasting that have resulted in several Emmy and Golden Mike nominations and awards. Currently, Carol is the U.S. correspondent for Radio New Zealand and Dick hosts the KNX Morning Show. Carol and Dick are fascinating individuals, together and apart, but together they're like dynamite. They have an obvious love and deep commitment to each other. I am so proud that we can count Carol Ramos as an alum because of the young women and young men she inspires. Dick is a University of Illinois alum, and we're so glad he switched. I think it was from economics to journalism, but we've adopted him too. One of the things that makes Carol and Dick together and respectively so unique in their careers is the length of the careers and the fact that it has been in radio. They have these beautiful voices. They have such an integrity. They have such a commitment to news. They call themselves news junkies. They are both such champions of journalism, Carol and Dick are, and they've come back, they've spoken to classes, they followed the developments of you know, what our students are doing. They so much have a, a real heartbeat and a great generosity for the college. They answer the call. They show up. They come back. They have spirit. And that love of life and love of journalism and love of what happens on this wonderful campus is something they respect and want to help us build. When I first entered the Arches at UGA, I knew it was an entrance to higher education. I didn't realize at the time that it was a gateway to a fabulous career. I've interviewed former presidents, heads of state, politicians, celebrities, civil rights icons. People who are heroes, but nobody ever knew about them. I've had the opportunity to talk to those people, and interview them, bring their stories uh, to life, and, uh, and shed a little light on many of the positive things going on in our country. I stayed local most of my career. I'm a radio and television reporter in local markets, and I kind of flew under the radar. I just never expected that, uh, you know, we would get this kind of, of recognition because we don't have that big platform and we never really attained any uh, national recognition. But uh, I'm so, so pleased that Grady has recognized not only me, but my husband because of our commitment to journalism, truth matters, it always has. And Grady is giving the future journalists the tools they need to dig for that truth. And it's something that we support and will continue to support. It says to me that in what Carol and I are doing for Grady and what we're able to do for Grady over the next, the next many years, um, it is a re recognition of that, uh, but also a recognition that my career has really meant something uh, to uh, people that I probably will never even meet. I never imagined that I'd go as far as, as I have in my career. And as a student, I could never imagine getting any kind of recognition or honor for work that I truly enjoy doing. 
but um, you know, I look back fondly on those days and all of the tools that Grady gave me to get to this point in my life, and I'm really, really appreciative of it. Grady's terrific. All the people that are at the school are terrific. Um, I, I cannot tell you how meaningful uh, this is to me uh, as a journalist who has spent his entire life doing this and uh, who, who enjoys uh, seeing the young people coming up and who share the same goals and ideals I had many years ago. And I'll just echo that uh, everything he said and add just one more thing. Thanks, y'all. Eugenia Harvey is the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer and a member of the Senior Leadership Team at WNET, a family of PBS television and radio stations, websites, and programming in New York and New Jersey. She has left a mark on the world of news media as a veteran broadcast journalist on shows such as ABC News' Primetime Live and 48 Hours on CBS. Eugenia has also served as a producer for Race Matters Solutions on PBS NewsHour with Charlene Hunter-Galt. There is absolutely something special about Eugenia Harvey. She is a consummate storyteller. She is one of the loveliest people, smartest people, most dedicated people I've ever met as a producer, as a senior producer, as a storyteller, bringing the world to life for all of us, highlighting our issues, highlighting the things that make us special as humans, and highlighting the things that we can do to improve the earth. When I think about what Eugenia has accomplished in her professional career, it immediately places her at the top of the list of some of the College of Journalism and Mass Communications top graduates. Who can say that they've worked at CNN and led shows, created shows at a global network such as Arise, had an impact on PBS, and is now leading diversity and inclusion for New York's top PBS affiliate. Eugenia's done all of that and more. She is a leader, it's been proven, she has a track record and she has that legacy of connections and relationships throughout her career and throughout the global community. She's had a huge impact on the world of journalism and she's had a huge impact and will continue to have a huge impact as a storyteller that brings those very important conversations to life for all of us. To be recognized for my work means that my, my philosophy around journalism is respected. And it's, it's, it's both an honor and it is humbling. Being willing to grow, uh, whether it's to move into the digital landscape, whether it's to be able to work from home, whether it's to be able to you know, work with people who politically and socially disagree with your alignments, um, all of that is a part of having gone to, to, to Georgia. It, it has just taken me places and it has shown me things and it has introduced me to people that I did not even know existed. So for that, I will be forever grateful for the journalism program at UGA. Our last inductee for the night is Ken Wu. Ken has an incredibly varied background in his nearly 40 years serving as director of photography, cameraman, and documentary producer. Currently, Ken is a freelance director of photography and cameraman and has worked on everything from the Olympics, Ironman, and Tour de France to several Super Bowl and Final Four championships.
I've known Ken for the last couple of years. Um, he has made a number of trips to Grady College to speak with not only my students, but also me too. And it's been a wonderful experience to learn about the incredible trajectory of his career. Ken has been doing this for decades. And that kind of experience really shows in the finished product. He's able to show us the inside lives and aspirations of these athletes that he covers. It's not just a job. It's what he feels deep down inside. This is the most important thing I can be doing. And he loves it. And it shows. What he has done over his career is operated at an extremely high professional level, recognized by his peers uh, for decades, uh, awarded because of his work with major awards. He exemplifies the Grady spirit. He is selfless, and what he is all about is doing his own work to the highest caliber he's able to, but also to help others learn from him so that he can bring others along as well in the kind of career paths they're doing. After these lectures and these seminars that I give, I always do a question and answer session and anybody can come and ask me questions and I'm, I'm just amazed at the questions that these students ask. With all the new multimedia and computers and streaming and all this stuff, uh, I'm just blown away by how much broader their knowledge is. and being able to contribute to their knowledge base I, i'm just so uh, i'm so thankful that they're willing to listen and are so interested in what i have to say i didn't know what my career path was going to be when i was at the university of georgia and in broadcasting and film i just knew i wanted to be a cameraman i had no idea where it was going to take me all i knew i just wanted to make good pictures and see them on television and it's gone beyond my wildest dreams it's taken me all over the world i met some of the most incredible people. I've worked 16 Olympic Games. I've done the Tour de France for a motorcycle. I've covered Super Bowls, NBA Finals, Final Fours. Uh, I've also done the Kennedy Center in Honors, the Grammys, the Emmys, the Oscars, all these things that I used to watch on TV and just awe. And looking back over my career, I can't believe that I actually filmed those things and was there. This has been the most unbelievable thing. It's like I've got all these I've done all these incredible things which I would have done for free. You know, it's just to be there. And some of the moments that I've been, it's like it's just been a whirlwind. And I and looking back, I can't believe it's been over 40 years since I left Grady. Congratulations again to all our honorees and thank you for the light you shine on the college. It has been an honor to be with you all virtually tonight. Before we close, I'd like to extend my appreciation to our Salutes Executive Producer, Dean's Medalist, Chair of the College's Board of Trust, and member of the Grady Fellowship, Jody Dan. Tonight marks the 13th year Jody and his team at Atlanta Image Arts have produced this gala as a gift to the college at a value of over half a million bucks. Thank you, Jody, Nicole Moran, and Allison Majors, all alumni of the college. To many, a college is but a place, a building, or a curriculum, or a set of programs. We all know it's so much more. The past year has made that abundantly clear. We've overcome a great deal, worked as one to solve so many issues, and come together as never before with the shared vision of a brighter tomorrow. The students, faculty, and staff who will soon fill our hallways are the recipients of your generosity. Thanks to each and every one of you, we stand stronger than ever, tested but not broken, ready to welcome you all back home. Thanks and good night.